this is Chuck Wasberg, Plano, Texas. And I wrote a poem to my friend Linda after her Ohio State Buckeyes won the national championship. And I would like to read that poem to you. The poem is entitled, Them Buckeye Boys. How about them Buckeye Boys? They're now the national champs. And they did it by taking on the ducks, then putting on the clamps. How about them Buckeye Boys? For now they are so cool. And with the national championship win, they brought glory to their school. How about them Buckeye Boys? Molded to be strong by Urban Meyer. And he combined many individuals into a team, but it was up to each of them to bring their own desire. But long before that final game, when the selection committee met, they had some tough choices to make. On that, you can surely bet. After they named the top four teams, the naysayers came out strong. They said that Baylor and TCU were better choices. And that the Buckeye boys, well, they didn't belong. Well, them Buckeye boys were chosen. What else can I say? And they were determined to show the world that the Big Ten teams, too, can play. Well, the first test for them Buckeye boys was the vaulted Crimson Tide. And most everyone outside of Ohio thought that they should run away and hide. I'm sure the boys from Tuscaloosa taught that they could take the Buckeye boys out to the shed and teach them a ting or two about football before hanging them their head. Well, as it turned out, them Buckeye boys, they had a shed of their own, and it was called the Sugar Bowl, and them boys played like it was their home. Alabama was supremely confident, and its defense couldn't wait to attack. After all, Ohio State's offense was starting their third string quarterback. When Bama jumped out to a 21-6 lead, the Alabama faithful were looking for a track meet. And there was no way in the world that their precious Crimson Tide would be beat. Ah, but the next thing Alabama knew, them Buckeye boys rang up 21 straight. Then they added 14 more to win and earn a national championship date. Next it was the team Everyone said couldn't be beat, cause them Oregon boys were the fastest on their feet. Before the championship game, them Oregon boys were a confident bunch. They thought they were going to kick some Buckeye butt, and it probably wouldn't take much. I watched them Oregon fans, and they were oh so sure that whatever the Buckeye boys threw at their team, their team would have the cure. Well, the ghost of Woody Hayes was alive and well that night. For them Buckeye boys did some kicking of their own, and it was quite a sight. Now, Oregon started out real fast, and they scored right out of the chute. And then they acted like bank robbers who got away with their loot. But them Buckeye boys, they didn't panic and circled the wagon tight. They didn't want that to happen again, or the game would be soon out of sight. Well, with the wagon now defended, it was time to get out and score. Soon they were up by 14, and they felt that they could get more. In the middle of the third quarter, Oregon made its run, and they came within spitting distance as they closed the score to only one. But despite Oregon's valiant efforts, the Buckeye boys increased the score. And after their last touchdown, I heard the Raven cry, nevermore. And then the game passed over and the clock ticked down to zero. And in the flash of that moment, them Buckeye boys became a hero. Soon the legend of them Buckeye boys will be known throughout the land. And everyone will know the story of the team that said, we can.
And somewhere down the road, when the Ohio State fight song is being sung, those players can tell their grandchildren, I was the Buckeye boy when I was young.